hey guys welcome back to my channel in this video i want to show you guys how to cut and sew this sheep's dress from start to finish but the main focus of this video is on how to achieve this mat or basket effects that you can see on this dress so you can use it to do any style that you want so this is just me showing you guys a video of how the dress looks like at the front and at the back okay so the first thing we are going to start with is drafting the pattern for a shift dress it's not necessary to actually draft the pattern on the brown paper you can cut directly on your fabric but it's because of the style that is at the front of the dress that is why i'm using a brown paper so i can separate everything so i'll go ahead and take all of my body measurements i'll start by marking my armhole points my bust points my half length my hip line and my full dress length so i'm going to mark this in two places so i can get a straight line note that this brown paper is on fold and the reason why it's on fold is because of the design in front is slanted lines and i won't be able to achieve that if i use just half of a pattern so i'm using a full pattern paper for this so this is on fold after marking out the points towards the center of the brown paper i also go ahead and mark it at the sides and then use my ruler to connect all of the points together next thing i'm going to do is mark out my shoulder measurement the shoulder measurement divided by two is what should be marked here and i just went ahead to mark three inches for the neck points so from the shoulder points i'm going to come down by one inch that's going to be my shoulder slope from the shoulder slope i'll go ahead and mark out the armhole measurements so i'm going to connect from that shoulder slope to the three inches that i marked for the neck measurements and that's going to be it for the shoulder slope so from that shoulder slope i'm going to connect to the armhole measurements which i took and I'll just draw a horizontal line from there. That's going to be my chest line. After labeling all of the lines, I'm going to go ahead and take all of the body measurements. So that's the round measurements. And this is going to be divided by four. So because this is a sheet dress, after marking out all of my actual body measurements, I will add one inch to it. So because I've added one inch to half of the pattern it means i'm adding two in front two in the back making a total of four inches so you can decide to add four inches to your actual body measurement before you divide or you will add one inch to the body measurements after taking your actual measurements on the brown paper so i just added one inch to all of my body measurements to give the dress ease so for the measurements at the hem of my dress, it is the same measurements I have at my hip line that I will mark at the hem of the dress. And then I'm just going to connect everything together. So I use a straight line to connect from the chest line to the half length. And then I use my hip curve to connect from the half length to the hip line. So from the hip line, I will just mark a straight line down to the hem of the dress. So after doing that, I'm going to mark two inch seam allowance all round. So this two inch sewing allowance is what I'm going to be working with. This includes allowance for turning, lining with fabric and also the allowance for joining. I'm going to mark out two inches if you don't have um a hip curve or a ruler you can use your free hand for this just make sure that you don't try to go all the way just work with it little by little after doing that i'm going to go ahead and construct the armhole for this dress so for the front you find the midpoint of the armhole you go in by half of an inch you first use a straight line to connect to the shoulder point and then use an armhole curve to connect it together. So I actually skipped what I did for the back piece. So for the back, I just constructed the armhole without going in by half of an inch. While for the front, I went in with half of an inch. 
okay so this is the two armhole for the front and the back that it's here because this is the same pattern i'm using for both the front and the back which is why i constructed both the front and the back armhole there so after that i went ahead to reconstruct my neckline and i decided to use a width of five inches and a depth of about six inches for my neckline and i just drew a straight line to connect everything together before drawing my curve to make sure that i get the perfect curve for the neckline okay for the back i came in with about 1.5 inch and i just marked the back neckline on the pattern as well so this is everything about drafting a pattern for a shaped dress please know that this is not my main focus for this video i'm just showing you guys the process so that if you want to follow this exact thing it will not be hard for you but my main focus is on how to achieve that basket effect and you can forward the video a bit to that part if that's what you are really interested in so please pardon me if this video is not really as detailed as you would expect it to be but the basket weaving part is very very understandable and i took my time to film everything and explain it more so this is the pattern that i have already cut out you can see that i did not cut out the neckline and i did not cut out the front armhole that's because i'm using the same pattern for the front and for the back so it's after cutting out the front um pattern on the fabric that i will now cut out the armhole properly and then i also cut out the neck for the back and for the front i just illustrated the neck that i was going to cut out on the pattern for you guys to see so i've gone ahead to spread out the pattern paper i can see that i have the full pattern for like the front of the dress already or the back you can use it for the front you can use it for the back so this is a full dress so remember the video that i showed you guys earlier the first video that's showing like this style the lines are actually slanted okay there are about three sections the first is the mat the second is ankara and then the final layer is also the basket effect so this is me marking out everything the first one starts from the half length and is a little bit below the hip line okay and then the other ones and is a little bit above the hip line sorry and then the other one starts from like about six inches below the hips straight down to I actually measured where i would want this other line to stop on my clients so that i will get this to be exactly where i want this to be so i also recommend that instead of just guessing where you want the lines to start and end you take the measurements on your clients so i don't know if you guys can see what i have in my job i'll try to take a picture and put on the screen but i already like made a rough sketch of the dress and then marked out where i would want the lines to stop like the inches for it okay so you can see that if i had folded this pattern like this i would have not been able to achieve the design i want which is why i had to cut it in full so before we continue with altering the pattern to get what i really want i'm going to go ahead and cut this on my lining for both the back and the front there will be no difference so i'm just going to cut it out for both of them and then i'll make alterations to the lining later when i've cut out the neckline and i have cut out the armhole so this is the first lining that i've already cut and then i'm going to go ahead and cut the other one you can see that i've cut for both the back and the front you're probably wondering is she not going to pull zip remember this is a shift dress this is a shift dress so a zip is not going to be necessary but if you are not comfortable with it you can still decide to put a zip if you want that's completely up to you so the back of this dress has the basket effect only at the bottom part of the dress so i'm going to first of all separate the basket that's towards the hem of the dress and then i'll go ahead and cut this pattern on my ankara fabric so this is going to be for the back of the dress please take note 
so after cutting this out i will go ahead and separate the pattern again separating the basket and the body parts of the sheet dress from the ankara part and then i'll go ahead and cut the ankara part of this on my fabric okay you can see the way i separated everything and i'll just place the ankara part of the fabric on my fashion fabric and i'll cut this out please pay attention to the way you place your fabric when cutting you can see that in this one i mentioned that the heart shape is facing up and i did not just place the pattern anyhow so always take note of that because that can play a huge role in how your dress turns out i went ahead to add half of an inch at the top and at the bottom of the ankara part of the pattern and this is what i will be using to join all of the pieces back together i also did the same thing for the back of the dress i added half of an inch to the bottom part of it which is what i'll be using to join the ankara part to the basket part of the dress so please take note of that so now for the pattern we are also going to need half of an inch to be added to the parts that will be joined back to the ankara so i went ahead to cut this basket part in two places because we are going to need it for the front and for the back and to be able to achieve the basket effect we are going to need the pattern so i went ahead to replicate the basket part for the bottom part of the dress in two places but the other one that i replicated i added half of an inch to the parts that will be joined back to the ankara because we need a half of an inch to join both sides together if not your dress length will be short by whatever you do, you forget to replace okay now for this other one you know i just cut it straight on the straight from the pattern so i went ahead to use my paper tape to add to the length of the down part of the basket effect to make it enough to join to the ankara so that paper tape now represents a half of an inch and i also did that paper tape method for the body parts of the front of the dress remember i also cut that one direct from the full pattern so i added paper tape to the front as well to the front bodies i'm just calling it bodies because it's the upper part of the dress so i added paper tape to it to increase the length so now when i join this together everything will run so based on the style of the basket effect i'm trying to achieve i'm going to use three inches for the width of the ankara that i'm going to cut out and then i'll fold this right sides facing each other and stitch this down with half of an inch before i turn it out and iron it flat so this depends on the style of basket or mat effect that you want to achieve if it's something very very thin you can cut out one inch or something a bit a little in between you can cut out two inches but based on the style that i showed you guys earlier in this video i'm going to be cutting out three inches so i went ahead to cut three inches off camera and i just stitched it down turned it out and ironed it flat remember i said we are going to need the pattern of the actual design that we're working with to create the matte effect so this is where we're going to need it when you want to create the matte effect you create it on the pattern that you would actually cut on your fabric you won't just create the matte effect and then now cut the pattern on the matte effect you do the matte or basket effect on the pattern so this is the first one this is the one that i'm going to put at the um down part of the dress so this can either be for the front or for the back so what i'm doing is i'm marking three inches and you can see where i'm placing my tape right i'm placing my tape on like the bias part of the paper and that paper i don't really have a bias part like fabric but like i feel like that's what i can use to really explain what i'm doing Note that you can place your tape rail anywhere depending on the design. So the design that I showed you guys at the beginning of this video, the basket is like in a diagonal 
um way it's placed diagonally it's not like a straight box it's more like a diamond shape yeah that's a perfect explanation it's a diamond shape which is why i placed my tape row at the bias part of the paper to give me that um diamond look that i want that i want for the dress but if you want it to be more like a box shape like a square shape you just draw a horizontal line draw a vertical line from like the top part and from the side and then you get the box shape but if you want a diagonal um sorry a diamond shape then you have to do it this way you can see that the diamond shape is already coming out so when i place my ankara fabric on this the diamond shape will come out very well so i marked three inches all the way and i went ahead to also do the same thing for the other side after drawing the lines for both sides this is what it looks like you can see that i have this diamond shape so i'm going to go ahead and also draw the line for the upper part of the dress as well this is what the pattern paper is looking like after i've drawn all of the lines on it so the next thing i'm going to do is place the ankara on the lines i'm going to first of all place the ankara facing one direction and i'm going to pin this down some people usually run a stitch along the line but i don't want any stitch lines to show on the ankara so i will not be stitching the ankara to the brown paper so i'll just use pins to pin it down to the brown paper so i'll pin the ankara facing one direction first before i move on to the next stage so this is what it looks like after i've placed the ankara and next thing i'm going to do is place the ankara facing the opposite direction to bring out that diamond shape some people usually just place the ankara as you can see me doing like this and then stitch it down but that's not the method i'm going to follow in this tutorial so i'm going to use the basket technique instead and to do that you're just going to place the ankara under then on top pass it under and on top again i don't know if i'm explaining this well but just watch what i'm doing you can see that i did not just place the ankara on top of it like that i'm intertwining the first one that i placed facing the other direction with the one that's going the opposite direction so i'm just going to film this again for you guys to see i'm placing this under then i'm passing this on top of the other one and i'm placing this under again and then on top and under and you can see that like this the both of them are already secured without me even having to pin it down so that's what i'm going to do for the rest of them and you can see that it's even looking neater than the one that i just placed on top of the ankara like that like it's looking more realistic and the design is coming out more so i'm going to do that for all of the lines and then i'll show you guys what to do next So guys, I've gone ahead to do the basket weaving for all of the pattern paper, including the bodies of the dress. And this is everything right here. So we're going to move on now to the next stage in this. And for this, I'm going to use my hemming gum and fabric glue for this. So some people can go ahead and use needle and thread and stitch all of these intersections down but i am going to be using glue for this because i don't want any stitch to show on the ankara so to use these two together what i'm going to do is first of all place hemming gum is first of all place glue underneath the ankara that is that intersection point i'm going to place glue underneath it so after putting the glue, I will now go ahead and place hemming gum on it. 
The reason why I'm putting hem in gum is so that when I iron the Ankara, it's going to glue a bit more than when I just use only fabric glue for it. So the hemming gum is like an extra hold to make sure that the Ankara does not fall out of place. So I'm going to go ahead and put the hemming gum and the fabric glue all over the intersection points for all of the pattern. So guys, I've gone ahead to glue everything. So what I'm going to do next is trim off the excesses at the edge of the pattern. And I'm also, go I'm also going to go ahead and do the same thing for the rest of the pattern. As you can see, I've also glued the Ankara to the front, to the upper part of the front dress. And then I'm also going to do the same thing for the back of the dress as well so you can see that i run a stitch round the edges of the pattern the reason why i did not bring it up is because i realized that it's actually not really compulsory to do that when you are sewing since you are still going to sew the pattern to the dress so this is everything this is the front part now next thing that i'm going to do is join everything together we are not removing this brown paper yet until we are almost at the end of this video so just keep that in mind what i'm going to do now is use the half inch sewing allowance that i left on the ankara and that i added to the brown paper to join the both parts together and it is advisable that you pin this down first so you have to pin it down first before sewing and then while you are sewing for this paper tip part you have to push out the paper tip because if you don't remove the paper tape it's going to disturb the machine needle so you're going to push out the paper tip while you are sewing and then you're just going to stitch it down using the half inch sewing allowance as you can see me doing so after stitching the first part to the front the first two pieces of the front dress together i'll go ahead and also sew the bottom part of the dress this is what the front of the dress looks like after i've joined all of the pieces together you can see that i know not removed the pattern paper yet so i'm going to go ahead and also stitch the back part together i'm just showing you guys here that i already folded in the paper tape part so i can stitch down with exactly half of an inch without the paper tape getting in the way and this is what the back looks like this is what the front looks like and now we're going to move on to the next stage the next stage of this tutorial is to turn the fabric with the lining that's to turn the fashion fabric with the lining and i'm using a dull face like i mentioned earlier in this video i want the shiny part of this dull face to be facing the front so instead of facing right sides together, that is the shining part of the doll face to the right side of the fabric, I'm going to face the wrong part of the doll face to the right side of the fabric. And I'm just going to use my tailor's pin to pin everything down first. What I'm trying to do here is make sure that the lining is laying properly. So that I have not yet cut out the neckline for this dress. So I'm going to use the front, the fashion fabric, to cut the neckline out on the lining as well so i'm just pinning around the neckline so that i'll be able to get an accurate cut when i'm cutting out the neck after cutting this out i'm going to turn the lining with the fabric using half of using about quarter of an inch for the neckline and the sides as well excluding the armhole take notes so if you are paying attention you will notice that i did not trim the armhole to be exactly with the um 
fashion fabric as well i'm going to trim that out later so what i'm going to do is that after turning everything inside out i will now stitch down that armhole point before i trim off the excess on the lining and i'm doing that to avoid the lining being shorter than the main fabric when i'm done so keep that in mind over here i'm just cutting out the neckline for the back piece as well and i'm using the measurements which i use on the pattern paper earlier so after cutting this out i'm also going to go ahead and turn this with half with quarter of an inch on the neckline and at the sides as well excluding the armhole you can see that for the back the lining and the armhole is exact there's no excess that's because the body's part of the back is not the basket design but the front is the basket design so it's that basket design that is causing shortages and excesses which i'm trying to avoid by making the lining to be a bit more than the main fashion fabric so keep that in mind I'm going to go ahead and cut out the neckline and then turn the fabric with the lining using quarter of an inch around the neckline and at the sides as well so this is what it looks like after I've stitched the lining to the fabric and it's at this moment that we are now going to remove the brown paper from the fabric so we're just going to tear this off easy peasy it's not really anything um that's much of a big deal so i'm just going to tear it off for everything and then go ahead and sew this down at the sides using whatever seam allowance that you used or you can also retake the body measurements to know the exact seam allowance to remove so at this point i'm just tearing off all of the pattern paper that i used and one thing i noticed that i did not film in this video is that after doing this the um net the basket part i mean it was not really um coming out the way i wanted it to and that's because it was not really it was not attached to anything you know i just turned this with the lining so it didn't really have anything to lay on to make the design to come out properly so i ended up using hemming gum to attach the basket effect to the doll face then for the hem of the dress i just used another piece of ankara to make the hem of the dress look neat now that part is completely up to you you won't be able to just turn the um fashion fabric with the lining for the hem of the dress because it's going to show the rough part is going to show so i use another piece of ankara fabric to tape the edge of the dress you can also just go ahead and use an ankara to create bias that you can use for the hem of the dress as well and now from this point whatever you want to do is completely up to you the sleeve design that you want is up to you and whatever um applique or stone that you want to put on this dress is up to you so after i went uh, after joining the sides together i went ahead to cut a bell sleeve for the dress and also to save the hem of the dress to make the dress stand out more i cut out to the applique from the fashion fabric and then i used rhinestones to decorate it and this is the final look can you see the way the mat part of the dress is attached to the main doll face this is what i was trying to explain if it was not fused with the doll face it wouldn't have really like come out well it would have been separating and falling let me just like attach a video here for you guys to see before i made the correction so this is everything for this tutorial i hope you guys found this video helpful if you have any questions leave them in the comment section and please give this video a thumbs up thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this bye